Hello and welcome to Boxer's Shorts. I'm Adam Boxer and I'm a science teacher trying to help you understand more of GCSE science. In these short videos, I will try and take difficult concepts from GCSE science, break them down, um, help you understand them, and then do some practice questions on those concepts. In terms of some general tips for using these videos, definitely do not have your phone on or anywhere around you. It's a distraction and it means you won't be able to concentrate properly. The same applies for other tabs on your computer. So don't have your social media tabs open on your computer or laptop. It will just distract you. I'm going to ask you to do some questions. If you don't actually do them, you won't actually learn anything. So make sure when I do ask you to do those questions, you do them. And finally, let me know in the comments if there is a topic that you want me to cover. Thanks for listening. And remember, you can subscribe and just let me know if there's something you want me to do for you. Okay, so today we're going to look at the conservation of energy. Um, a reminder again to turn your phone off, put it away somewhere, and turn all your other tabs off. Uh, you cannot multitask, you won't be able to focus on both at the same time, and the other tabs will distract you, I promise. Today we're going to be looking at the conservation of energy. Uh, before this video, you should know already about the energy stores and the energy transfers, and if you've not seen the videos on those, I recommend that you do. Uh, you also need to know a little bit about power, which is what the last video is, power, energy, and time. So, conservation of energy. Let's say we have um, a tree and this is the branch of a tree and at the end of a tree is some kind of fruit. Let's say an apple. Now the apple isn't going anywhere so if we were to draw a box to symbolize its kinetic energy store it will be empty. It's high up though, so if we were to draw a box for its gravitational store, it would be nice and full. Now remember by the way this is a simplification, it's a bit more complicated than this in reality but I'm just using it as a simple version uh, to help you explain the concept, to help, sorry to help you understand the concept. Suddenly, the ball falls, the, the ball, <laughs> the fruit, the apple falls off. And it starts to fall down towards the ground. And it falls down and down and down and down and down. And it falls down further and further until it hits the ground. This point here is where it's going to be just before it hits the ground. So if I were to draw the ground, it would be like just like just above it, like the instant before it hits the ground. The instant before it hits the ground, its kinetic store is nice and full. It's moving really fast just before it hits the ground. What's in its gravitational store? Pretty much nothing. Again, this is a simplified version. So we're imagining it as just, 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 just before it hits the ground. So you might think, you know, there's a couple of tiny, tiny, tiny little dots in there, but basically nothing. Now the energy that it's got in its kinetic store has to come from somewhere. And as we've seen, the place where it comes from is its gravitational store. So if we're going, say, halfway down in the apple's trip, so half of its kinetic store will have filled up and the gravitational store, half of it, will have emptied out. And where's all that energy gone? It's gone to here. The energy from here has gone to here. And as the apple falls, energy is going to keep going from one to the next. Now at the bottom, it's just on the ground, so it's just a second before it hits the ground. So the gravitational store is nice and empty. Kinetic store is about as full as it gets. So far, so good. But let's say we put some numbers on it. Let's say this apple in its gravitational store has got 100 joules. By the time it hits the bottom, that entire 100 joules will have gone there. Which means that halfway down, we've got about 50 here, and we've got about 50 here. 
At the top, there's nothing in the kinetic store because it's not moving. At the bottom, there's nothing in the gravitational store because it's right on the ground. The fact that this energy moves from here to here is called the conservation of energy. Because I could have said to you, well, you know what? That when it gets to the bottom here, it's moving, it's got like 80 joules in its kinetic store. And the other 20 joules from the gravitational store, they've just, poof, they've just disappeared. They've like gone. It's been destroyed or whatever. The law of conservation of energy says that energy can't be created, it can't be destroyed. It can be moved from store to store, from object to object, sure. But it cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed. Let's do another example. Let's say I've got a nice block of wood. And my block of wood has energy in its chemical store. And let's say it's got, I don't know, 10,000 joules in its chemical energy store. I set fire to that block of wood. And I use that to heat up some water. So I transfer the energy from here to here. And we know from our first video that that transfer is called heating. The thermal energy store over here starts to fill up as the chemical store over here starts to empty. So at the start, this is all full and this is all empty. At the end, this one is all empty and this one is nice and full. In a future video, I'll show you that it's not actually that simple, but for the minute, that will do. If you've started with 10,000 joules from here, you have to end up with another, I could write it anywhere, I'll write it here, 10,000 joules up here. The energy goes somewhere. It's not created, it's not destroyed. The energy isn't created from the fire. There's no energy destroyed because it's really hot. That's not how it works. The energy just moves from one store to the next. All right, you're now ready to do some simple problems. Um, again, this is a very, very straightforward concept. The energy, uh, however much you started with, is how much you end up with. Uh, have a go at those questions. Uh, question seven there is a power calculation. So make sure you've got your calculator at the ready. A reminder to pause and then when you're ready, press play. Okay, so the answers to these questions. Uh, the first one, an apple in a tree is a gravitational store of eight joules. If it falls, what's the apple's maximum kinetic store? The maximum would be eight joules. Can't be more uh, because where are you gonna get the energy from? The energy comes from the gravitational store, so that's the maximum. Right, got a child at the top of the at the top of a slide, eighteen hundred joules. What's the child's maximum kinetic store as he slides down? Again, the maximum would be eighteen hundred joules. You cannot get it from anywhere else. Bouncing ball has fifty joules of kinetic energy that leaves the ground, so it's going up. The maximum gravitational store when it reaches its highest point. Again, fifty joules because energy can't be created, it can't be destroyed. What you start with is what you have to finish with. Uh, and then as it falls back down again, the maximum it could have would be fifty joules. So as it comes back down and hits the ground, the maximum it would have would be another 50 joules. When will the energy in its kinetic store be zero? Uh, so that would be, I mean, in this example, when it's right, right, right at the top of its bounce. So it bounces, goes up, then stops and comes back down again. That bit where it stops, it's got zero joules in its kinetic store. Cannonball shot straight up from a cannon with an initial kinetic store of 7,000. Maximum gravitational energy again would be 7,000 joules. All right, for this question, um, I'm gonna uh, use my board because I wanna slow it down. Uh, and I'm just gonna use my standard DESCU method, the DESCU method. Um, so I'm gonna write out my data. The, that's the energy from the question, that's the power from the question. My equation is P times T equals E. I'm gonna substitute those values in and I get 2500 times by T, whatever that might be, equals 15 million. I calculate that and I just rearrange or I eliminate depending on whatever language you use divided by 2500 that works out as 6000 so I'll just write that down as 6000 
seconds and that's done again thank you for listening and a reminder to subscribe if you want to do the next videos which will be making this model of conservation of energy a bit more complicated and a reminder as well that if you have a particular topic that you want me to cover just let me know thanks again bye